In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for waking us up to see the light of a new day. Your word is a lamp to our feet and a guide to our path. Father, we pray and thank you for wisdom, understanding, discernment, and humility. May we be receptive and allow ourselves to be transformed by you. Through Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. Today's meditation is taken from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 10, verses 13 to 15. Woe to you, Chorazin! Woe to you, Bethsaida! For if the mighty deeds done in your midst had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have long repented, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. Luke 10, 13 to 15. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The past days, we have been drilled about the importance of following Jesus. God reminded us that following him sometimes entails change of plans, hardships, rejections, and a lot more. In today's reading, we hear Jesus telling the people to repent. They are reminded of their laxity. And I can't help wondering what he's saying about us, this generation. You know, I'm always amazed at how sober I can be when faced with the reality of death. You know how everyone is quiet and serene at a funeral or wake keep? And I realize at such moments how fleeting life can be and how quick I am to reconcile and make amends. But check me out on the next weekend, back to my old ways, quarreling, cheating, fighting, telling lies that, like there's no tomorrow. My dear brother, my dear sister, we are taking things too easy. We are behaving as if we will live on this earth forever. Yes, it may seem like we still have our whole life before us. Things are moving just fine. But it could be over in the twinkle of an eye. Would you be ready? Will I be ready? It was the same in the days before the flood. People were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage. Up to the day Noah entered the ark, and we know how the story ended. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 2 says, For you know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. But Laura, hold on, what are you talking about? I attend church every Sunday, sometimes even Tuesdays and Wednesdays. I never miss my Bible study classes, and I listen to lots of talks and sermons on YouTube. I fast every week. I pay tithes and church contributions regularly. I go for evangelization every month. I get up at 5 a.m. every morning to pray. I pray the rosary every day. I sing in the choir. What else is there, my dear? You see, I'm very busy doing the work of God. Go look for someone else, please. Well, that is good. That is very, very good. Keep the fire burning. Keep working to win souls for the kingdom. Keep investing in building up your spiritual life. You are not the only one. I tell you what, there was another set of people who did even greater things than you. Matthew seven twenty two introduces them. Lord, Lord, in your name we spoke God's message. By your name we drove out many demons and performed many miracles. And what did they get? Jesus told them, I never knew you. Get away from me, you wicked people. Matthew 7, verse 23. My dear, I'm afraid that's not enough. Going to church, Bible studies, singing in the choir alone will not take you to heaven. I know that writing and sharing meditations on practical theology alone will also not take me to heaven. Let me tell you a little story. One Friday, I set off in all excitement to go for evening mass. I was running late, so when I saw people standing in front of the church, I immediately remembered it had been announced that the Friday Mass would be cancelled. It turns out I wasn't the only one not paying attention that day. Anyway, I immediately went to plan B, which was to sit in the bench under the huge tree in the park and complete the rosary prayer I had started on my way to church. The more I thought about it, the more I loved the idea, especially with the fresh air blowing in my face. But there was a problem. My neighbor. She was in her 60s. She could barely walk. She was losing her memory. She was always happy when I stopped by to greet her. And she was there. She was staring at me. I tried to ignore the smile, but there was just no way. I knew what I had to do. But I so badly wanted to just sit down and enjoy the fresh air and pray the rosary. And that is how the battle began. 
I gave my reasons. I justified it. I reminded God that I wanted to pray. But deep inside, I knew it. I never won a battle against God anyway, so I just surrendered. I took that lady by the hand. I walked her home and assisted her in climbing the stairs to the third floor. She was exhausted by the time we reached her door. I helped her sink into her chair while I got her pajamas and helped her change her clothes. I gave her medication, made her evening bread with a cup of tea, and we chatted for about an hour. Then we said a short prayer, and I left. As I walked back home, I regretted not being able to finish my prayer. And the Lord said to me, What you did for that lady was worth more than 500 Hail Marys. Oh my God. How tempted I was that day to just sit down and pray, knowing fully well that this woman needed my help. Isn't it amazing how we can sometimes jump over a beggar at the church door because we are running late for service? James 2 makes it very clear. It says, What does it profit, my brethren, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can faith save him? If a brother or a sister is naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you says to them, Depart in peace, be warmed and filled, but you do not give them the things which are needed for the body, what does it profit? Thus also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. James 2, 14 to 17. So church going, Bible study, conference attendance, choir practice, etc. These are just tools to help us grow in faith. But this faith must be manifested by our actions. I don't know if this is making any sense. James 2.18 says in conclusion, Show me your faith without works and I will show you my faith by my works. You know, Jesus compared the people of Chorazin and Bethsaida to the people of Tyre and, si- and Sidon. Why? Because the people of Chorazin had received so much, but had produced too little. The people of Tyre and Sidon, on the other hand, apparently had not produced much, but might have produced had they received as much. Luke twelve forty seven says, The servant who knows the master's will and does not get ready or does not do what the master wants will be beaten with many blows. As Christians, we are called to go out and bear fruit. We know the Bible in and out. We can't complain of being ignorant. We have received so much from the Lord. Are we producing accordingly? Remember, from everyone who has been given much, much will be demanded. And from the one who has been entrusted with much, much more will be asked. Luke 12 verse 48. And this is what Jesus told those who could not understand him saying, depart from me, I don't know you. He went even further to say, depart from me, you who are cursed into eternal fire prepared prepared for the devil and his angels. And they were all perplexed. Oh Lord Jesus, why? We cast out demons in your name. We attended Bible study. We gave messages in your name. What is going on? And Jesus told them, I was hungry. You gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty. You gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger. You did not invite me in. I needed clothes and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison and you did not look after me. Matthew 25 verses 41 to 43. My dear brother, my dear sister, let us look into ourselves again today and see where we are standing with the Lord. Let us sincerely ask ourselves what we have been doing with all that has been entrusted to us. If he comes for us today, what would he tell us? Are we manifesting our faith in our day-to-day lives? Or does it end with tithing, Bible study, and church attendance? Let us pray. Gracious Lord, we thank you for nourishing our souls again this morning. As fruit trees, we are called to bear fruit, not for our own consumption, but for the good of our neighbor. Grant us the grace to generously provide to those in need. Father, we pray that your peace may reign in our world today, especially in Kenya, in Cameroon, and in all places where your children are being persecuted, maltreated, and brutalized. Comfort the brokenhearted, heal the sick, provide for the needy, heal our world. Through Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. I am Laura Tinzo, wishing you a very fantastic and faith-filled Friday in the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed be Jesus Christ at all times. Amen.